Justin Trudeau's talk of retaining the status quo in the Senate because it benefits Quebec has one Western frame you're seeing red and repeating his determination to see the whole thing abolished. I talked to the Saskatchewan Premier Brad Wall earlier today. Premier, uh, I'm curious what you think about Justin Trudeau's comments. He basically stated the math works very much in Quebec's advantage. Uh, 24 seats in the Senate in, for Quebecers, 24 for all of Western Canada. What's wrong with his comments? What offended you? Because you seem to be reacting negatively to what he's saying. Well, I, I find the comments disappointing. They're divisive. Uh, you know, they, uh, they speak to an inequality in the Senate that people in the West have wanted to see uh, addressed through things like a Triple E Senate. One of the E's in Triple E, of course, is equal, that each province would have equal representation to balance off what is a representation by population body in the lower house, the House of Commons. And I'm not sure someone who's aspiring to be prime minister should be basically defending the, the Senate's uh, status quo because it confers an advantage on one region over another. That doesn't sound like the kind of national approach we'd want from someone applying for the job of prime minister, whoever that person is. Okay, well the status quo is not an option according to the Senate leaders, both the government and the Liberals uh, saying here in Ottawa. Do you think the change, if you don't abolish it, and I want to get to your comments on abolishing it in a second, but if it's not abolished, does the West not need more representation in the Senate in your view? Well, I think one of the key parts of reform in the Senate, as has been discussed now for, for well, decades, is the E that represents equal representation. We, as I mentioned, we have in the House of Commons a representation by population body where more populous parts of the country are represented thusly, but we don't have that equal uh, counterbalance as some federations do. The United States is the closest example where we'd have equal representation for the provinces in the uh, upper chamber. Uh, and that's the problem because that's, for me, uh, what meaningful reform means. Electing, you know, a few provinces electing their Senate delegations or electing nominees that the Prime Minister appoints for life or, or I guess till 75 or even for a long term without, by the way, the prospects of re-election for those Senate nominees, uh, I don't think improves the accountability. And, and I don't think it's the kind of meaningful reform that would... Uh, that would change, for example, my personal view, although our party's position is a little bit different, but that my personal view is that I, I think it's just time to abolish this thing. Unicameral legislatures work well across the country. The provinces provide a good counterbalance to the federal government. They provide a clear voice for provincial interests within the national uh, context. And I, I don't think the Senate then performs that role very well. And if it can't be reformed meaningfully, why don't we save the $100 million? <laughs> what was the tipping point uh, in this whole scandal as it's unfurled when you said, you can't reform it, you've got to kill it? Well, I, for me, it, I've been talking about abolition now for some time. Actually, I'd asked our party to consider it in the fall, long before the scandal broke. Uh, you know, I haven't been premier for that long, but in talking to other first ministers and other premiers, I've just come to the conclusion that meaningful reform that includes the equality piece, not just uh, a universal or general elected Senate, but also e equality amongst the provinces, that's just never going to happen. Uh, we're going to have the most populous provinces, and I don't blame them for this, who are likely not going to go for that. And we know that that kind of substantive, meaningful uh, reform of the Senate is going to require constitutional change and requires those populous provinces, at least one of them, to be supportive. And so if it's not possible to fix it, is tinkering the right thing? Is electing a senator until uh, he or she is 75 again without having to face the prospects of, of re-election? Because there's nothing that focuses the mind of, uh, of politicians like the like the accountability of re-election. But if, we, if we're only going to tinker with it and have some provinces electing senators for a very long time and everything else stays the same, why don't we save the $100 million? Why don't we move on past having an appointed body as a part of the democratic process in our country? Are you prepared to take the consequences of ripping open that constitution and never know what's going to come out, whether it's First Nations issues or, or whether it's Quebec issues? That could be a big Pandora's box, no? Well, Don, maybe if the provinces were to agree, and by the way, uh, our party position is not necessarily in favor of abolition. We're revisiting it now, and prior to when the premiers meet the summer, it may change. If it does, uh, we may have a mandate to go to, uh, to that meeting and say, look, as provinces, we could send a signal to the country. We could have free votes in our legislature on a constitutional resolution to abolish the Senate in the fall. Uh, and send that message to the country. Again, I, need the, uh, I would need that mandate from the party and, and uh, we're, we're seeing what's possible in that regard. 
But that's the kind of exercise that could happen without, uh, without necessarily opening the Constitution immediately. We could take the temperature of the country. If there were free votes in the provincial capitals and members were free to represent the views of their constituents, I believe the votes would be in favor of abolition right across Canada in those legislatures and creating at least the formulaic possibility of uh, change without you know, a long, drawn-out constitutional process. It's hard, no question about it. Uh, it's not an easy proposition, but I think that reform, meaningful reform, is impossible, and the status quo is unacceptable. So that leaves us uh, with potentially pursuing some options around abolition. Are you, you've been in the past said that you support Pamela Wall and say she's a good senator for Saskatchewan. Do you still believe that? Well, she's been a strong voice for Saskatchewan's interests. She's been present in the province. But, you know, Don, I think there's some issues with respect to uh, uh, expenses that are currently the subject of review by the Senate of an audit investigation. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I, I think we need to be circumspect until uh, the results of that, uh, of that work is done. Uh, and I'll leave it at that for now, pending that investigation. Final question. Uh, you're a seasoned veteran of the legislature politics. Have you got any advice for Stephen Harper on how to handle this controversial issue in terms of damage control? No, I don't. Uh, g governments face these controversial issues, and uh, you know uh, the uh, the best way to do it is to answer the questions as they come. Uh, and uh, that's what we try to do if we if we're ever presented with issues. Uh, uh, in the in in question period, and you know we'll see what happens. But I, I don't have any advice for any other uh, first minister. We, uh, you know, we're each going to take our own approaches and, and have different uh, situations to deal with in the in our various capitals. Getting it out in the open has got to be a good first step, though, right? Uh, well, you know, uh, that would intuitively that would be uh, that would seem to be the right way to go. And uh, you know, I I've said publicly in the past with respect to the issue of. Uh, what the Prime Minister knew and when. Uh, I have worked with the Prime Minister for some time. I found him to be a man of his word uh, and he's made uh, several uh, declarative statements about, uh, about this, about what he knew and uh, I accept those uh, on, uh, at face value because of the experience I've had in working with him. Okay, Brad, well, always a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you. Thanks, Don.